Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at a game capture device from Elgato called the HD60S. And this looks very similar to one we looked at probably about a year and a half ago called the HD60. But the difference is, is that uh, this new one has very little latency when you're recording. So if you've ever seen the lag that often happens with these game capture devices between what you're doing on your console and what shows up on the recording computer screen, uh, this eliminates that provided you meet the minimum hardware specifications, which are a bit steep. Deep. And we'll get into that uh, when we look at this in more detail later in the review. But before we do, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Elgato. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look now and see what we got for hardware. It looks very similar to the HD60. In fact, the case is the same, but the ports are slightly different. Uh, they have added, instead of the regular USB connector, a USB Type-C plug, uh, but they give you a USB Type-C to USB 3.0 cable in the box. So if you don't have a USB Type-C connector, chances are you're going to be fine with the included cable. You can, of course, run a USB Type-C to Type-C cable and plug it into your fancy new laptop and get it to work with that. Uh, HDMI in here, so this is where you plug your game console or uh, whatever it is that you wish to record uh, into that port. If for whatever reason your console or computer doesn't output audio via HDMI, uh, there is an audio input here and it will mix those two uh, sources together for the output onto the recording computer's screen. And there's also an HDMI output on the other end, so if you still wish to plug in a monitor or a secondary display to uh, make sure you have zero lag when you're doing your recording, uh, this will let you do that. What, what you're going to see a little later in the review is that although it does work with very little latency most of the time, sometimes it creeps in. So if you are very concerned about uh, having your gameplay suffer with this device plugged in, I would always suggest uh, using the external monitor to get all this working. Now we're going to hook up a rather beefy laptop laptop to make all of this work. I have a, a very recent XPS 15 from Dell, which has a quad-core i7 Skylake processor. That is a sixth generation Intel chip. Uh, again, quad-core, and that's the minimum, an i5 quad-core uh, fourth generation or better. So a lot of you have laptops maybe with an i5 processor. There's a good chance that's a dual core and not a quad core. And with the dual core chip, uh, you're not going to get 60 frames per second recording. I'm finding on my dual core i5, another recent uh, Skylake edition of the Intel chip, I was maybe getting 45 frames per second of recording capacity. Uh, not going to get you there if you're looking for the highest quality 60 frames per second 1080p video. So for those folks, I would recommend going with the HD60, uh, which has some on board encoding which makes the file smaller before it gets it uh, over to the laptop because what's happening with this one is that not only is it bringing in that video uh, and getting getting you very low latency in the process but it's also having to process it on the processor as it's doing all of this and you just need a lot of threads available to make all this work and unfortunately uh, you're going to need something a little bit on the expensive side to get this product working the way they are advertising it so I just connected my USB type C connector we're going to plug in my HDMI cord from an Xbox I have on the floor here and you can see now that uh, my Xbox is on screen. I'm going to show you a better view of the screen here in a minute. What I want to show you first, though, is the lack of latency that you'll see while you're recording, provided you are meeting the hardware specifications. So uh, here I am jumping around in Sunset Overdrive, and I'll give you an idea just when I push the button uh, how quickly that button push is translated into something on screen. So it is a very, very fast response here, very minimal latency. Uh, in fact, I really can't detect much at my advanced age here, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. It will change a bit, though, as we start uh, working in some more effects, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, by and large, this was a, a pretty impressive feat here to be able to record this uh, and get this streaming in real time here with uh, very uh, little latency, if any, which has been nice to see. Another thing that it will do here is when you move your mouse off the interface is that it will eventually zoom in uh, the game footage to go full screen. So you can uh, get the entire screen filled with your game while it's recording and streaming, which I thought was a, a nice touch that they added to that. Now, if you have an HD60, this is the very same uh, interface that that device has. It's the same software. Uh, so up in the corner here, you can see how you're doing with your recording. If you are dropping frames, you'll get a warning up in this uh, corner here to alert you to that fact. So there is some uh, notification when you are running low on your ability to uh, get things brought in the way you want them to. Uh, live streaming is here. It can be configured for a bunch of different services. I have mine running to YouTube at the moment, but it does work with Twitch and I think a few other services too. You can add them uh, just by hitting the plus button. I think it's only one at a time though, so you can't uh, broadcast to multiple services simultaneously. Uh, game audio is what's coming in via the HDMI from the Xbox, so you can have your game audio on top of that. 
Uh, you can also hook up external microphones to it and record your game commentary. And it does have a feature where it will duck the uh, in-game sound so that your uh, voice is heard there. They have a uh, software mixing uh, thing as well. So you could bring in multiple audio sources and have their uh, Elgato sound capture mix them into a single source. And you can use that source as a microphone. So you could bring in maybe if you had four or five people on different mics with a mixer or something, you can bring them all in through different sources and then uh, get them into a single output that you can dump into this. Uh, the tags here are just for setting up your video file. Uh, you record down here. What's cool is that it has a DVR function so you can rewind uh, to different parts of your gameplay in case you weren't recording and did something cool. Uh, you can go back here in history, uh, play back from a spot that you thought was pretty cool and record that uh, latent footage. So it has a, a bit of a DVR built in too. We'll go back to live here. I, for I forgot how much it keeps in the back but it's a pretty decent amount of uh, stuff in the background that uh, when you do something cool and you want to go back later, you can pause it and uh, rewind and make sure you didn't miss that footage. If you want to start streaming, you just push this button here. And then if you want to be able to start doing some audio commentary, you can hit that uh, right there to get that going. And then on the uh, other row here is uh, something they call stream command. And what I can do now is uh, push this button here. And what it will do is pull up my webcam, as you can see. Here I am. Hello, it's the wire in the way. Uh, and I'm able to talk and uh, also um, provide some video footage of myself playing. But this is where some of the problems come into play because this is where the latency starts to come back because it's now having to render all this stuff on screen. So we've got the webcam here and this in uh, some of the graphics that come with that because you can customize these things any which way you want. And you'll see now as I'm jumping around that there's a much longer uh, delay here between the time that I push the button and things happen on screen. And you don't get a warning about that latency creeping in. So uh, the more you do, the more this will slow down. And it really is, it's funny because it doesn't just like jolt and then start being uh, laggy. It just kind of fades into a lag period. And I'm finding that sometimes it does this and sometimes it doesn't. So it's hard to say uh, what triggers that or not. Uh, what I I will do for the techies out there is pull up my uh, task manager here so you can get a feel for uh, what's going on with the CPU. And as you can see, it's even it's, it's taxing it just to bring up the task manager here uh, to see what's going on with the uh, software as we're taking a look at it. But uh, this computer, by the way, has 16 gigs of RAM too. So you can just see what the performance is going to be like with their software, uh, even on something that's pretty high end. So I'm going to let this thing figure out what it's doing. And when I finally get a number up on the screen, we'll come back and take a look at what the CPU performance is looking like. All right, we finally got everything back up and running here. And as you'll see, we're only using about 65% of the overall CPU, but uh, we are starting to see some clipping on the graphics here. The latency is definitely picking up. And what I did do also while I was uh, getting everything back online here was start a recording, uh, do some live commentary, and start some web streaming too, just to really uh, push it further. So it's funny because we're not using all that much memory and the CPU isn't really all that taxed. But as you can see here, we're now completely frozen up here trying to get uh, all of these tasks done at the same time. So, you know, this is the same kind of problem that I ran into with the last version of this, which is that the software promises a lot, but they really have a hard time delivering it. The hardware is great, the stream quality looks really nice, but um, it really just, uh, this is an example of what you might encounter a lot of times, just a frozen screen uh, and nothing working at all. So uh, this will require us now to maybe uh, stop the recording here. And now that that's stopped, it's back to uh, working again. So there are things that uh, really don't completely max out your computing hardware that might just freeze the software up for no reason. And I, I'm not gonna, I think I'm going to have a hard time finding people that have laptops more powerful than this. I mean, there certainly are ones that are out there. But you know, as far as its processor is concerned, this is uh, as close to the top of the line that you can get on a laptop. And it's struggling here, even though its hardware can definitely do more than uh, the software is asking from it right now. So the same issues that were there before are still here now. Uh, but the latency is certainly much better with this device than it is on others. Now, now, what I did do earlier was record a, a 60 FPS a little live stream locally to the computer. And I will roll that footage now so you can see what it sounds like when it does work. So what I'm finding is that the latency definitely increases when you activate this stream commander thing. So sometimes it's really latent and other times it just seems to work correctly and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes I found that if I uh, turn it off like this and maybe then uh, turn it back on, the latency gets uh, a little bit better. But it's definitely not consistent. And this is on a quad core i7 Skylake laptop here. So I think your mileage will be very similar to the one I'm, uh, what I'm experiencing here. So it'll give you an idea of that. But um, the capture quality is really nice on this. I definitely am pleased with how it looks. It's just that, uh, like the other one, the specs are very high on this, at least the requirements for your computer specifications. And uh, I think a lot of folks are going to be disappointed by this if they don't have a computer that is up to, uh, up to task here. So 
definitely some audio dropouts now too. So I'm really not sure how well this is going to come out. Uh, but I'm going to stop recording now and then you can take a look on the channel in our special highlight reel and see. All right, so we're back and you saw that there's some lip syncing issues and then the audio was dr uh, dropping out a lot as well as we were doing the recording there. Again, this is just not working right. And uh, this is the Elgato software not working right. The good news is though that this does work well with third-party packages, again, provided you're meeting the minimum hardware specification for their driver. Uh, so XSplit uh, works really well with it. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And I was also able to use uh, OBS with it too. And those seem to work better because those packages are better optimized for doing the kinds of things that game streamers want to do. And thankfully, uh, the HD60 works with those. So let me get out of this uh, Elgato software now. We'll take a look at XSplit and see how it performs. All right, so here we are with XSplit, and we're running right now on a YouTube live stream as I am playing. As you'll see here, we are streaming live, but uh, we're not getting the latency we had before on the Elgato software. So I'm really going to recommend that you use something like XSplit uh, instead of the Elgato software. If you're looking for something free, then uh, OBS Broadcaster will probably do a decent job as well. If a lot of you want to see that instead, let me know. I'll do a follow-up video. I just didn't want to do uh, too many examples of the same thing here, but this does seem to be working pretty well uh, as we are moving my uh, button about here. It is uh, feeling like a pretty decent gameplay experience. Again, I think you still probably would want to uh, maybe connect up that uh, that other display option to get everything working better. But uh, even here on my CPU usage, this is using a little bit more CPU. We're about 78%, 84% total here, but um, it is performing better. Uh, so it's making better use of the hardware that uh, is going into play here. So I think XSplit is probably going to be the better choice. So where am I at with the HD60S? What's funny, I am pretty much of the same opinion on this one as I was with their other HD60 product, which is the hardware is great, but their software just isn't up to par. It wasn't so great a year or two ago when we looked at the HD60, still not so great now with the HD60S. I've been really struggling to get consistency out of it, and I just haven't been able to get there with uh, some pretty beefy hardware here with this Dell laptop that we're running with, and uh, I just can't recommend the total package as a good product, but I think if you are a user of XSplit or are a user of OBS or something similar, uh, you will like the way this works because it does have third-party application support. I'm finding the latency is still very low with uh, XSplit as well as OBS, provided your computer hardware is still capable of uh, driving all of that uh, data through. So again, you're still going to need that quad-core i5 processor at a minimum, but uh, you will have better luck with third-party applications than you will with Elgato's own application. So plan for that uh, because you will struggle and get quite frustrated, I think, with Elgato's included software. As nice as it looks on the screen, it just doesn't work well enough for what I think a lot of game streamers are going to want to see. So uh, make sure your computer is there with the, with the quad-core processor and uh, the third-party software is where I'm going to suggest that you go. Now, if you do have a slower dual-core computer with an i5 or better, uh, I would check out the HD60 because that device has a lot of uh, built-in circuitry on the, on the box itself to uh, bring over pre-compressed video. You don't get the low latency you saw with the 60S here, but uh, you do get a very nice piece of capture hardware that uh, will also work with those third-party applications and uh, give you a nice quality image for your gaming productions. This is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.